today's video, we're going to be looking at how tide will affect our upwind strategy. And to do this, we're going to explore the effects of tidal flow on our boat and use this information to highlight some areas where this will impact our strategical decision making process. So we can fully understand how tide affects us, let's look at some of the basics. In this first example, we are sat with our sail out in dead calm conditions, literally zero knots of wind. But there is a two knot tidal flow from the bottom to the top. This will drag our boat up towards the mark at a rate of two knots. In a similar effect as to how we feel wind on our face if we're putting it out of a car window, this movement will mean that we'll feel two knots of induced wind in a directly opposite direction to that initial tidal flow. In this second example, we have exactly the same wind conditions, but now a two knot cross tide. This creates a sideways movement and therefore a sideways two knots induced wind in exactly the same way as before. So now we understand this basic movement and the induced wind created, let's look at the effect of this in normal sailing conditions. In this situation, we have a five knot true wind and again that two knot tidal throw from the bottom to the top. When we sail our close hauled course, we will still feel that two knots of tidal movement and therefore the two knots of induced wind that it creates. The addition of this induced wind and the true wind means that we actually feel like we're sailing in seven knots of wind. So in this example, the tidal movement is giving us positive VMG to the windward mark and an increased boat speed due to the addition of the tidal induced wind. So now let's look at what happens in the same wind conditions but with the tidal flow coming with the wind. In this situation, we'll have a detrimental tidal movement and our induced wind is opposing the true wind direction, now giving us a reduced apparent wind strength. So in this example, we have a reduced VMG due to the tidal movement, but now a decreased boat speed because of the tidal induced wind. Following on from that, we also need to look at the effect of cross tide. Here we have a cross tide from left to right. This gives us a sideways movement as before and an induced wind in the opposing direction. The angle of this induced wind in addition to the true wind actually gives us a lift. So we not only have a positive VMG due to the tide but also a lift because of it as well. Finally, if the tide is flowing the other direction or we're on the other tack, the opposite happens. The induced wind angle now combines with the true wind to actually give us a header. So overall, we feel like we've got a reduced VMG due to the tidal movement and a header due to the tidal induced wind. So now we understand the effect of the tidal induced wind, let's add that knowledge to a few situations to see how this may affect our strategy. First, a uniform or consistent tide with or against the wind. When the tide is flowing against the wind at a consistent rate on both sides of the course, there is actually no strategical advantage. Both boats will get to the wind mark at the same time. Similarly, if the tide is flowing with the wind at a consistent rate across the course again, there is no strategical advantage on either side, they're both as equally slow. The only thing worth noting is the narrowing of the course and ley lines when the tide is behind you compared to the widening of the course and the ley lines if the tide is against you. Now let's have a look at the effect of a uniform cross tide. In this situation with tide running from left to right consistently down the course we now know there will be a lift on starboard tack and a header on port. Even though there's a skew in the course, there is actually no advantage from going to one side or the other. Only a small amount of risk involved with overlaying the starboard ley line. But if we have a longer line at the bottom or a gate and we're not starting at the same point, 
it can be said that there's a gain in starting up tide, as this means we'll end up sailing less distance, shown here by the blue boat. Unfortunately, the tide is not always consistent across the race course, causing a tidal gradient. Let's look at a few situations with the tidal gradient with the wind with and against the tide. The tide will change quicker and it will flow slower in shallower water, normally near the shoreline. So in this example, there is tide flowing against the wind, but only one knot inshore and three knots out in the deeper water. Here, we will want to gain by sailing out towards more tide than compared with the less tide in the shallower water. And of course, the opposite happens if the tide is in the other direction, flowing with the wind. Now, we want to sail towards the shore and less tide compared with the deep water on the right hand side of the course. Finally, let's look at a gradient tide going across the course. This is normally associated with an on or offshore wind, as there is a change in the strength of the tide throughout the course. In this situation, the tide is less for the first half of the beat and then increases nearer the top half. So in this situation, there are small tidal shifts to begin with that increase throughout the course. Therefore, even on a long line, taking the small header first and coming back with a larger lift is favoured, seen here by the left hand side and the yellow boat. So now that we fully understand how the tide affects our boat and therefore our upwind strategy, that's yet another factor to input into our decision making process. This is where we identify gain features, sort them into a plan, execute that plan as best as we can and evaluate it for next time. This process is explained in a little bit more detail in my previous strategy video on wind strength.